Hey, it's Jared. Today we are in Notion and we're going to create a social media content calendar or a content database. Now, in many of the videos that I've done in the past, I end up showcasing my content database and I get a lot of questions about it. I also recently released a video on how to post to Twitter directly from Notion and that got questions about the content database. So here we are creating a content calendar or a content database for your social media posts. And we're going to walk through the setup here. But if you would like a shortcut, you can use the link down in the description below to sign up for my templates. You just put in your name and email, you get access to all of my templates, and I'll occasionally shoot you an email when I have a new template for you to check out. So this is my content database that I use. And you can see there's lots of content that's in here. Most of these are YouTube videos, but I also post in here when I am going to be scheduling or creating something for other forms of social media as well. This is the database view and there's lots of stuff in here. I've been using this since 2019. So there are hundreds of videos in here, even more social media posts, but we're going to create one of these together. So I'm going to go into a page that I am setting up here. This is the page that you would see if you signed up for my free templates, you get access to all of my templates by signing up for that. And here is a blank page called the social media content calendar. As I've taught in my Notion course, setting up the type of database at the beginning here doesn't really matter. I tend to go with the first view that I want to be utilizing and we can set up multiple views. That's the beauty of Notion databases is that there's multiple database views and we can see our data in different ways as we set up additional views for our database. But we're going to go with the traditional calendar. So I'm going to set up a calendar here. It's going to want to connect it to a database, but we want to set up a new database. So I just clicked on new and it's automatically creating that new database called social media content calendar. And you can see we have a blank calendar, which is great. I'm going to add an additional view here, which we're just going to call the table view, or we'll call this all posts and a table view and hit done. And so I can go between the calendar view and the all posts and you can see it's empty. It doesn't have anything in it right now. I find it easier to build out a database using this view than in the calendar view. So we'll start out in all posts. Now name is fine or title. We can rename this to whatever we want. Name is fine. That's going to be the name of our post, whatever that is. And then a date. And this is a date property that we can assign to it. And that came in because of the calendar. And so what I want to do is make sure that this is the date that we would publish. And so we'll call this the publish date. So we'll just change the name. So publish date. And then we have tags and tags is just in there by default. We can add tags. Sometimes I will use this as the type of post, like if there's a subject and I have different subjects. So that way I can go back and view all of the different subjects or topics that I've been posting on and see all of those posts. That would be something really challenging to do if I was to go to Twitter, or go to Facebook or Instagram and try to find all posts by a specific type or uh, subject. That would be tricky. So we can use tags for that. One of the other areas that I add is a multi-select and under that multi-select, I put platform. And now this would be for the platform that I'm going to be posting to. And I could be posting to multiple platforms. And that's why I choose the multi-select because I might post uh, to Twitter and that might also go to Facebook. And maybe there's an image assigned to that as well that might also go to Instagram. And so that way I can choose multiple platforms. So I'm going to add a, an empty row here and we'll just call this test post. And under platforms, we're going to fill this in a little bit because there's nothing in there yet. So we'll add Twitter, we'll add Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and you can add as many as you want, whatever social media platforms you're going to be using. And of course, it's adding all of these to our first post. And so I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of them, but Twitter and we'll hit done. Now publish date is what we would assign the publish date. So if this was something I was going to be posting tomorrow, I could choose the publish date. I would then include a time because I probably want that to go out at a specific time. And so I can choose, let's say, 
11 a.m. tomorrow. And if I wanted a reminder, I can also add a reminder. Now, I think the reminders would be good because if we are going to be manually posting to social media, like this is where we house all of our information for our posts, and then we take this and manually post it to social media, it would be good to have a reminder ahead of time so that I know that I should be posting that at whatever specific time I chose. So I might choose like 15 minutes before I would get a notification for this post, and then I can go and manually post it. Uh, but I'm going to turn off the reminder because I don't want a reminder. As I've shown in another video previous to this video, you can actually use Notion to schedule social media posts, which is amazing. So if you want to create the post in Notion and then have Notion automatically publish that to your social media platform, you'll want to check out my video where I showcase how to set that up. I walked through how to do that with Twitter and you can do the same process for Facebook, for Instagram, probably for TikTok, basically any platform that Zapier would connect to, you could pull this off. So definitely a cool video. You'll want to make sure to check out that one next. And then under tags, if we had topics, let's just add some topics in there. Motivation, productivity. So we've got a couple of topics in there. And of course, we can go in and change the colors to those so that they're not the same color and hit done. And then if we go back to our social media content calendar database here, you can see that we've got an entry. And if I go to calendar view, you can see we have an entry as well. Now in the calendar view, it's not showing me a whole lot of information about this. So if I wanted to go in and add more information, I could go to properties and I can have it show properties. You can see all of the properties right now are not showing. We don't need publish date to show because it's literally on the calendar on that date. So we don't need to have the date shown. That would be kind of repetitious, but maybe we want the platform and the tags to show because that way we'll be able to get a visualization of how many posts that we have per social network and that we have uh, per topic going out. And so this allows us to kind of just visually see, okay, great. I've got a Twitter post on Tuesday. It's on motivation and productivity. And so I want to do one of those every other day. So I make sure that I have those planned out on the calendar every other day. Very cool indeed. Now, another thing that I typically add, and we'll just go back into our all posts view here. Another thing that I typically add is a URL to that post. Now, I usually only use this for YouTube because I don't need the URL of a tweet. I don't need the like the web address for an actual tweet or an actual Instagram post or an actual Facebook post, but it is nice to have a link to the YouTube video. And so I'll add a URL to this as well. So I'll tap on URL or I can add post URL to the beginning of it. So we'll just add the word post and hit done. And that way, if there is a website address to the post that I want to have readily available, this is going to be time saving down the road. When I know I need to link to a YouTube video or something like that, I already have the link here. I don't have to go log into YouTube and go to the video and, and copy the link. It's all right here in front of me. So this could be as deep or as simple as you need it to be. For me, I also tend to attach a file. So if it's gonna be an Instagram post or something where an image is gonna be attached, it's nice to have the file readily available as well. So we'd go in and grab files and media, and I could just leave it, I'll just call it file. I don't like having long property names, and so we'll just choose file. I'm gonna move this one over a little bit and readjust the width and then I can add a file. So if I have an image that I'm gonna be posting, whether it's a graphic or a photo or something like that, I can attach that here. So I have all of the content for that social media post. And then when it comes time to, to post it, it doesn't matter what device I'm on, as long as I have access to Notion and I have access to social media uh, through a web browser or whatnot, I can make that post happen. And so having all the data and information in one place is actually a really cool feature. And so right now we're not even utilizing the bottom portion, the pages portion here. Now here's two different thoughts. I would typically use this page section down here to house any information about that post. It might be the actual content of the post. If I'm researching the post or something like that, I might use this section. However, if you're gonna use my method that I taught in that other video about how to auto post 
from Notion to social media, you'll have to add a section up here in the properties for the text of that post. But down here in the body is where I usually add any thoughts, any information that might help me out with that post. And then I build my post based on that information. So it's also where I am keeping the notes that I utilize for that individual post. So right now I'm not doing that for this, but it's uh, something to consider. Now, another thing that we want to add here as a property is a status for that post as well. And so we'll choose select and we'll choose status as the title of that. And we'll just move this over a little bit. Um, I like to have that one next to the publish date because the status is going to be where the status of this is. Is it scheduled? Is it published? Is it one that I'm still working on or researching? And so I tend to have a variety of different status updates here. So that way I can get a visual on what I still need to be working on. So I can have one as new. I can have one as in progress. I can have one for scheduled. And then I would also create one for published. And then that way I can change that status. Now in that video about using Notion to auto post, I also have it set up to automatically change the status from scheduled to published as well, which is just super cool, the things you can do with automation. So we have two different views here. We have our social media content calendar view and a calendar form. We can see the name of that post, we can see the platform and also the subjects for that individual post. And then we have a database view of all of these as well. As you go and continue to utilize this tool, it will really start to become useful as my content database, which is essentially my social media calendar. I use this to build out all of my content, whether it be a social media post, a YouTube video, or even a course. So very useful tool. As you figure out how to utilize it in your life, you'll start customizing those properties. You'll start adding little things to it to make it more useful for you. Keep in mind though, my biggest advice is to keep it simple. Don't let it get overly convoluted because if you do, it'll become something that you hate to use because it's too complex. So only add things and features and properties and things to this platform as you need to because like I said, to add too many things, it'll become a headache, you'll start procrastinating and you won't want to use it. At least that's my journey and I want you to avoid falling into that pit. So Find the template in the link in the description below, as well as a link to my Notion course, which will help you learn how to build all of these things out and also how to connect something like this that we just created to maybe a projects database or how to connect your social media calendar to your tasks manager as well. Lots of cool things that you can do. Check out some of the other videos that I've got on this channel. Click that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. We'll see you next time.